uh, we've had a bunch of webinars, company introduction webinars this week, um, and uh, all of them were about other companies participating in Exculture. But right. one of the clients uh, this semester is the Exculture Academy, which right. is sort of a subsidiary of Exculture that uh, provides the same program to uh, pre-college teenagers, uh, right. as well as uh, non-university professionals. So basically adults who would like to participate in Exculture and who, not, uh, who do not have um, a connection to participate in university. And so we have here with us Dr. Leilani Balmanis, uh, who is the program director. And uh, so I'll ask her to tell more about the program. Maybe I'll just do a quick overview just for those who are not you know, complete, completely oblivious as to what Exculture is and how it works. So, but um, this program is recorded for the students who participate in Exculture as students. So you know the basics of Exculture. So the whole idea here is that uh, we provide students with sort of two opportunities or learning uh, opportunities. One is uh, international experience. So okay. students complete the project in teams uh, from with people from different countries. And so by doing so, they work with people from different time zones, different um, uh, cultural environments, institu institutional environments, uh, use online collaboration tools. And by doing so, they uh, sort of experience in real life the challenges and hopefully learn the best practices of the things that we try to teach them in the classroom with uh, textbooks and lectures. Okay. And so uh, they apply it in real life and presumably that allows them to better comprehend, understand the challenges of international collaboration and kind of learn through the experience. Uh, the other advantage or uh, learning opportunity is the business side, business consulting. So as you know, we have real companies with uh, real challenges. Uh, and so they would like your ideas, your input on uh, how to, uh, whatever program problems they may have. And so here um, the um, uh, students essentially serve as consultants and again, uh, do they solve those problems for the company as well? Some do a so-so job, some do a very good job. Collectively, they do a very, very good job. But importantly, they sort of go through that experience in the same format as it works in real consulting companies. You meet with a client, as you do with us now, we explain who we are, what we need. You spend some time trying to solve the problem, do some research, uh, maybe find some uh, possible solutions. Uh, you send us questions if you have them, we send you the answers. In the end, you give us the report with your solution and hopefully it's so good that we take it, apply in real life and uh, do well uh, or better because of your suggestions. Now, from the very beginning, so Exculture has been around for uh, 11 years now. We started in 2010, so it's almost 12 now. And uh, so originally it was envisioned and designed uh, for university students. Uh, so, and for, for a while it was only university students. But um, early on in the project's uh, sort of life, uh, we had requests from uh, mainly professors who say that, uh, or said that they had children ages, whatever the ages, 14, 15, 16, 17, uh, who wanted to participate in Exculture as well. In most of the cases they would say, uh, the child will be going, or the, the person, the, not child anymore, I guess, you know, my son, my daughter will be going to college soon, and I'm trying to find some uh, activities for the, for the kid to, to, you know, work on and then put on the resume, or maybe will be going to study overseas, or maybe wants to practice English, or maybe is interested in international business, and so my child would like to participate in an activity like that. Can he or she do that? And so we had said uh, no for many years. Uh, we thought, um, you know, age difference is a big factor. And if we have most of the participants who are in their 20s or 30s or even 40s and 50s, if we added younger participants, it wouldn't be a, a good match. So it would be, you know, um, all kinds of problems can, can, can arise. But then at some point when in one semester, I don't remember when it was like four or five years ago, um, several professors asked about it at the same time, we thought, well, we have enough to kind of test it. So it will not be a large group. I think we had something like 30 people that time, but it would be interesting to see how it works. And so we tried and we had just only a few teams. I think it was like three or four teams of like seven people each. Uh, and uh, it actually worked pretty well. So in fact, um, I included my own children in that 
track in that run. So at that time, there were, I don't know, like 11, or 12 or something like that, and 15. So still relatively young, but, you know, old enough to try it. And it actually worked very well. So uh, the children liked it. Uh, my kids would spend a lot of time on Skype or Zoom or whatever we were using at that time with our team, talking about both the project itself, but also about, you know, life and schools and music and whatever else, hobbies. Uh, so they had to learn how to write uh, longer messages because, again, especially at that age, it was all short messages on the phone. Here you need to communicate about a complex problem. So obviously you have to use more complicated, uh, you know, more detailed, more comprehensive emails. It was kind of funny to see that my children didn't know how to do it. Uh, they didn't have the concept of time zones. They kind of knew it. But now that you have team members from, you know, India and Ukraine and the United States and Japan, all of a sudden you have to think about how to do it in a way that, uh, uh, you know, that everyone can hear you. I mean, and that everyone can, can, you know, join the meeting at the same time. So that was something that they had to do. And it worked pretty well. So from that perspective, it worked pretty well. And so um, now that we've had it uh, for a few semesters and we tried it with different age groups, we know that there is a lot of value for children in, in a program like this. Then probably right around the same time, we started getting inquiries from uh, random, not random, but non-children, non-students. So you know, people who would be 20, 30, 40 years old who would say, um, I'm a manager at this company, or I work for that company, or I will be applying for a job, uh, or even sometimes I'm a student, but at a sort of wrong university, so university that does not participate in ex-culture. And so they would say, can I participate individually? So uh, I wish I were at, at a, in a course at a university that participates in ex-culture. I'm not, but can I participate on my own? And so we tried it a little bit, you know, first sort of low, low key, but then Dr. B, Dr. Bauman is here, came and said, hey, maybe we can turn that into a, sort of a bigger problem, I mean program. And she had all kinds of dif different ideas for how it can work for professionals, even beyond simply them, them participating in ex-culture uh, as everybody else. So those people may be interested in much more than just completing the course. So many of them, uh, you know, seek uh, advancements at work, uh, promotions. Uh, many of them genuinely need this kind of experience for their work, and so they would like to gain it. So uh, there are all kinds of big plans for professionals. And so that's where we stand at this time. So we've done it now several times for uh, professionals and for teenagers. It seems to work very well. Uh, we do have some challenges with the program, such as um, uh, people are um, sort of, how should I put it, uh, less, maybe not less prepared per se, but maybe less, uh, less chaperoned if I may use that word. Like for example, our main program with the university students, all of the students come with professors, right? So first of all, they're all university students in business programs. So they do have certain level of training through other courses that had taken at the university. So they would have at least some basic understanding of I don't know, marketing management, accounting and things like that. So we don't really need to teach them much on the subject matter. Plus they are in international business courses at the time of the project. And so again, those courses cover basically the same things that they need for the project. But then when you look at, and then they have a professor. So all of them, almost all of them come with uh, a professor. So there would be a class, like for example, I have my own class in Exculture this semester. So uh, not only had I prepared them for the project, so I had been telling them every time we have a lecture that Exculture starts in a couple of weeks, this is what you need to do, this is how it will go. But now I am available to them if they have questions. Every time I have a lecture, I would devote a few minutes uh, to Exculture, ask them how they're doing, provide some insights, some, some advice, uh, some recommendations for what needs to be done. So I essentially sort of act as a, as a manager of this, of this group of people. Now, when we have uh, professionals or teenagers, uh, you don't have that sort of level of support. So many of them come unprepared, especially younger ones uh, often didn't ever participate in online projects, never took an online uh, course, or I guess with COVID now they took the online courses, but never uh, took a business course, for example, a marketing course. Uh, so they don't have a teacher, so they enroll most of the time uh, on their own. We do have some participants who are school groups with a teacher, So, but even there the teachers are sort of, you know, they're not the kind of professors that participate and chaperone the older kids. So again, the teachers often need also some supervision as well. 
And the same thing with the professionals. Again, many of them have a lot of experience, you know, many years of experience, but at the same time, they have not uh, participated in global virtual teams, projects, you know, international business assignments. And so in many cases, they do need to be told uh, and taught some of the basics of international business. And then obviously also one of the challenges might be uh, the sort of, uh, how should I say, commitment. So uh, with university students, if this is part of my course, if my grade depends on this, I will participate not only because the professor tells me to do so, not only because I may be interested in it myself, but also if I do not participate, I will get a failing grade for my course. And so I have to. Individual assignments, I mean, individual enrollments, uh, people enroll, they think that it's you know useful, nice, interesting, but some of them get busy, some of them get, I don't know, uh, swayed, some of them get, get disappointed that it's so much work. And so if we don't do proper selection and vetting, we may end up with uh, accepting, you know, a thousand people and only 500 of them are actually ready to, to do the job. And so that's a challenge. And so um, we tried it, it works very well. We do have a bunch of challenges that we will talk about, you know, in terms of marketing, promotion, recruitment, performance management. Uh, we'll share those in a few minutes, but I wanna turn the microphone to Dr. Baumanis if you would like to maybe descri describe a little bit more sort of the business side, the business side and the, and the business model and the big plans for the program. And I'm not sure if it's business per se, if we want to emphasize the business component, but the organizational side of the Exculture Academy. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Voss, Taraz. Uh, we call him lovingly as Dr. Voss uh, because they call me Dr. B. So we thought it would be a nice, you know, short way of addressing Dr. Taraz. Um, so for uh, many of you um, who are doing this for the first time, um, you probably have, you know, some sort of intention while you're doing this. And for the most part, for students, um, it's, uh, it, it, for, for our students, it's for um, college bound purposes. Uh, if you're a university student, or if even if you're an academy student choosing this project, um, it's typically because like Dr. Boss said, it's your grade or you're trying to um, get a letter of recommendation so that you can go to the university. So, um, but let's take this down to um, why Academy um, actually exists and what is the intention and the purpose of Academy in general. <clears throat> okay, so again, to, to divide it into two cohorts, we have under 18s, and then we have over 18s that are not in the university and we consider them professionals. So again, for academy, our target markets are students under the age of 18 and students or professionals who are uh, over the age of 18, but are not at the university. Um, for the, and let's just say that the purpose of our students joining this program under 18 students do it for two reasons. Again, two reasons. One, because they're college bound and they need some kind of um, international experience. And also because we certify our students to become uh, global uh, virtual team professionals, it gives them an advantage, advantage over our other students who are perhaps also competing for that seat at the university. <clears throat> Another reason why a lot of uh, under 18 students join our program is because of the English um, practice opportunity. Uh, a lot of our students actually come from um, outside of English speaking countries and many of them want to go to a American or an English speaking university and um, having the opportunity to work in English and practice the language with other English speaking professionals or students is, is a, a great opportunity. Because many of you know who are studying a foreign language, unless you use it, it's really worthless, right? Learning how to conjugate verbs and, and sentences is not the same as practicing it with somebody doing real work. Um, for our uh, professionals, and let's just say that these are, again, over 18 um, ex-culture participants or academy participants who are not at the university, but are working somewhere. And again, their intention is maybe one, 
uh, to get professional development under their belt, or two, to improve their English language. Um, and with, with our population of students, it really does make a lot of um, sense for them to engage in this kind of global collaboration because it's a very unique project. It's a very unique experience and it gives them such a, um, an opportunity, an advanced opportunity to compete among their peers. So those are the two things that you probably, well, several things, but those are the two groups that you, you should probably be familiar with and the intentions behind why they're joining Academy. Um, so Dr. Voss talked about how a lot of our students don't actually have teachers or professors. And uh, more and more, we are trying to um, find the solution to that. Uh, what we're finding in the underage students is a lot more cohorts that has a teacher uh, is actually joining us, but also that we've created a very robust coaching program for the underage students. Um, also more so for the overage student or over 18 students, um, but they don't need as much of handholding as the underage students do. So our coaching program, um, again, made up of former ex-culture uh, graduates who have done the program and then went through a coaching uh, training program to learn how to help you. These uh, um, coaches then kind of guide you along the, you know, the, the eight week process. Um, and um, and we're, we're training more and more to become more um, comprehensive in that and trying to engage uh, our students more so they don't, they don't feel like um, they don't have support behind them. Um, another thing that we've done, and uh, I think this is the most fun for academy participants is we've injected a lot of non-academic um, opportunities for collaboration and for uh, engagement. Again, um, this is very interesting. Yep, yeah, yeah, a lot of things here. So let's go back to why X culture exists in the first place. Okay, besides the fact that it originally started as a university project, um, the, the, the intention behind uh, X culture always was to create um, opportunities for students to learn to become global citizens. And even more so today with a lot of our political unrest that this is <clears throat> a platform for all of our students from all over to the world to get together in a group, in a team and learn about each other. And so cultural intelligence is one of um, our um, huge endeavors. It's probably one of the biggest for me. Uh, and one of the things that, that I do or that we do as Academy is we create cooking classes so students can engage. Um, our uh, students can actually take each other on virtual tours of their country of their city, of their region, of their schools. Um, <clears throat> our students can also do art, art um, programs or art shows where uh, one of our coaches will actually curate artwork that, that students, academy students have done all over the world and provide a venue for them to show it. Again, this is all virtual. Um, one of our students actually created a, uh, a sports challenge where uh, through a sports app application, they were, um, they were training and, and engaging at the same time. Now you're saying, oh, wow, you know, like I have friends or I, I, have, I don't have time for that. But um, what I've observed in the several years that I've uh, participated in X culture, and even more so now in participating with Academy, is that the friendships that you can develop uh, with that, that physical contact, and especially now because we have um, 
you know, such a, a virtual world. You guys exist in a virtual world, but the the contacts, the the networking that you can develop uh, across time zones, across um, boundaries, you know, territories, it's it's immense. Um, I, I've watched, I've observed my uh, coaches become best friends. They've never met each other in person, yet they've worked several years together, learning about each other, um, you know, engaging in activities that really deepen their knowledge about each other and each other's culture. So I think one of the largest um, benefits for you is this networking and learning cultural intelligence through the friendships that you develop. Um, so one other thing that I want to um, highlight is that we are going through some growing pains. Dr. Voss and I will uh, talk about the marketing and the recruitment component in a minute. <clears throat> but one of the things that um, I've set to be my intention and in the next um, let's say in the, in the next few months is really to develop um, academy in a way that we have the teens that will keep uh, calling academy and then we'll have the professionals and the professionals will be in its own silo. Um, the teens will be, um, uh, will be marketed in the same way that we've been marketing in the past. Uh, we're still trying to find our sweet spot with that we're having a hard time uh, recruiting on an individual basis. Uh, it looks like we might have an opportunity to recruit in a cohort basis, which means classes at a time as opposed to individual students at a time. But uh, we see that the problem that we're having in marketing to underage students might be an opportunity for us to market to over 18 professionals. And, and that's why we really wanna silo off or divest from Academy the, um, the professionals. And we're gonna try to market that as a, a B2B, which uh, in the business world, B2B means business to business. Um, and it would be a continuing education slash professional development initiative. And that those, um, those professionals who go through our certification program can actually use it to uh, advance their, their careers. Um, so Dr. Dean, probably yeah. maybe we should talk about the types of help we are seeking, right? So I assume that students uh, more or less know about what X culture is, plus we do have yeah. um, a, a recording available to them for the X Culture Academy orientation. So they, right. they should know with your overview here and uh, the additional resources what the program is. But so now we seek your help with trying to build it larger. And so maybe we can go tech, you know, point by point where we, we need help. So like, for example, in your challenge here, the first question we ask you is um, industry and competition analysis and market analysis. And so from our perspective, and Dr. B, uh, tell me if you have more to say, but to our knowledge, um, there are many, many different programs that offer sort of extracurricular activities for kids. Uh, so there are all kinds of courses, uh, kids or professionals for that matter, and professionals can enroll in offered by Coursera, Udemy, all of those different platforms. At the same time, we didn't find anything quite like, like X culture. So I don't think there is anyone who does this, you know, like full immersion international team based experience. Right. And even if there is something, it's not really much competition. But in terms of our market, so when we started X culture, we thought it would be like university students, it would be schools that participate. So we thought it would be teachers with students uh, enrolling in X culture as, as a group. And we've had some of those. But to our uh, sort of surprise, most of the applications come from individual applicants, from uh, people who either seek the experience for themselves or sometimes maybe parents enroll them. And so that's, that's the group we work with now, but maybe there are other markets, maybe there are different sort of niches or segments or needs that we haven't fully explored. And so you know what the program is, uh, now tell us 
who might need it uh, or who else might need it because what we have, uh, you know, seems to work, but I'm sure there are other types of people uh, sort of that we didn't consider who might be interested in this program. Maybe some sort of, I don't know, uh, uh, organizations who seek training for their employees. And so it would be sort of companies, not schools. Right. Maybe it would be some form of, I don't know, governmental institutions or agencies. Maybe it should be school districts, not schools as an individual school or teacher, but maybe like a whole school district. So that we don't really know. And we would like to get your experience, you know, thoughts about that. Uh, next one, and again, here we can tell you what we've done and what worked, what didn't, but maybe again, you have some suggestions, marketing. So again, with the, the university program, uh, our marketing is uh, extremely simple. We literally just send two emails a year to the Academy of International Business and Academy of Management. And uh, all members of these organizations, of these associations receive an email from us saying that Exculture is accepting applications. And so most professors who teach international business are on those mailing lists and that's the population we target. And so it works very well. So we've had always enough applications. Mm -hmm. with, the uh, with the school students, schools and professionals, there is no academy of, I don't know, individual, you know, participants or I, I don't even know, like there is no single mailing list that we can use. Mm -hmm. And so we tried all kinds of tools to inform potential participants about this program. We know the program is valuable and uh, useful because we get extremely positive feedback from those who have participated in the program. So we know that we deliver a lot of value, but now the question is how do we inform more people about this program? I mean, we don't really have the resources and I'm not sure if it would be sort of prudent to put ads on TV, for example. Like we cannot really cover the whole planet with TV ads or, or newspaper ads. And I'm not even sure if it would have been the optimal way. So we've been trying to rely on, on uh, social media, but it's, you know, again, tricky. So for a while we were placing ads on uh, um, Instagram and Facebook and it worked very well. So uh, we would get uh, like last semester we, we got for, for a few semesters up until this one, uh, we got something like 2000 applications from our ads on social media. But then Facebook started changing the, the algorithm yet again. And so in the last round, it just didn't work. Like it, it was almost almost zero. So I'm not sure what they changed, why they changed. I know that sometimes the rules change, the laws change. Like for example, now most social media would not allow ads to younger participants. And for Academy, we need younger participants. And so uh, that essentially made it impossible to place ads on Facebook and Instagram and most other media. We tried a LinkedIn and it didn't work at all for some reason. So we thought maybe there would be either you know moderated professionals there who might want it for themselves or maybe the professional parents who would like a program like this for children uh, for their children but somehow it didn't work at all we tried uh tiktok and we tried um youtube uh, didn't work either for some reason like it didn't give us good results we got a few applications but it was a lot of money and very little result but then again maybe our ads were not good enough although we tried hundreds of combinations we tried uh, every possible sort of uh, demographic slice, you know, different ages, different countries, different interests, uh, different, uh, you know, you name it. But then we also tried, uh, you know, pictures, uh, text, uh, videos, short videos, long videos. Um, we tried some content marketing, but not as much as we should have. Uh, so that's where, again, maybe you can help us with creating some content that we can test. Like for example, we thought it would be maybe some sort of like a self-assessment test uh, and then uh, those who maybe are very culturally intelligent will just congratulate them. Those who perhaps need to develop it will, will say, well, here is an opportunity. We thought maybe developing some sort of guides, um, like, you know, like articles that we can post online, uh, you know, how to apply to college, uh, how to uh, improve your uh, resume, things like that. And, and honestly, and, you know, uh, diligently list all kinds of different options and advice, but one of them being Exculture Academy, uh, the program here, and then hoping that some people would uh, apply. But we haven't tried that one much. And then again, uh, what we did try didn't seem to have worked very well. So surprisingly so far, the most effective method for us was literally uh, uh, like very simple text in a carousel form on, X, um, on Facebook and Instagram, where it's like three, four words per slide. Uh, and it was literally like, you know, international business for kids. Next slide. 
uh, ages 15, 17. Next slide. Improve your resume, improve your chances to get into a college. Next slide. Uh, mm -hmm. People from different countries working together. And so there was like seven or eight slides and that worked the best. So that was no pictures, very simple text. But is it the best way? We don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. And it doesn't really work that well anymore uh, because as I said, mm -hmm. something changed with the algorithm. It, it did happen a few times. Like we had a few instances when the statistics that Facebook gives you on, you know, your ad performance goes like dramatically down. But then we try a few new things and eventually it works again. Or sometimes over time, it just works by itself. Mm -hmm. But here um, they changed uh, the last time. It was right in the middle of the recruitment campaign. And so it somehow just, you know, like it was doing well and then it went to nothing, like absolutely. So they would mm -hmm. take the money, they would show the ads and nothing happens or not show the ads at all. Like they just show it to some probably their own audiences. Right. But in any case, we are very interested in your help as to marketing. Uh, we also tried letters to schools. So we sent a few hundred letters and then a few hundred reminders to different schools, primarily that specialize in um, uh, uh, education in English and education for expatriates, like all those British council schools, all those uh, schools like in Dubai or, uh, I don't know, like major cities that cater to the uh, to children of expatriates who work in those cities. But I don't think we even got a single reply to that, those. I don't know if they even read them, but it was like, you know, paper letters, like real letters in an in a envelope. We also tried emails, same thing. So luckily we have enough former participants who bring friends. Uh, so some of these ads still work okay, you know, not, not impressively, but we still get applications. But it seems to me that we have probably close to a billion kids and professionals on this planet who might be interested in a program like this. I mean, we're talking about potentially a huge, huge, humongous market. And uh, so we just didn't find a way to inform them. So if we, we haven't found them, the sweet spot. <laughs> we yeah, haven't found was that? I said, we haven't found our sweet spot and we yeah, have been yeah. trying, yeah. you know? So, and we're hoping that since you guys are in this age group and yeah. you guys understand the market that you guys can help us kind of find that sweet spot. And also let me remind you that it's a new world, right? This is really a, a very opportuni opportunistic climate for virtual communities. Uh, and virtual learning is kind of like um, the new wave of education. It's the new classroom. So um, we haven't been in this kind of a scenario for a while that we really did the research for it, but hoping that you guys now are um, more experienced in what it's like to work in a virtual classroom, yeah. that uh, maybe you can be creative and inventive and kind of discover a new path for us. It's been kind of a challenge, you know, trying to get um, the awareness out there, but we have so much to offer. And again, with our intention of, you know, creating a, a, a global community um, and developing cultural intelligence and creating global citizens. I mean, that's our message, right? We want to get the cultural intelligence out there. We want to get um, you to become a global citizen, right? And yep. the other thing too is it's, you know, what is our competitive advantage? You, you have to take a look at what Coursera is doing, what our com competitors are doing and what we're doing better. And the thing is, you know, you know, because you're doing it right now. Yep. So, you know, I, I think focusing on for our college bound students, focusing on learning how to speak English, um, you know, uh, collaborating and networking with students all over the world is an opportunity uh, for our professionals. Again, you know, improving their English and then also networking with other professionals all over the world and then, you know, becoming certified in global virtual teams is our competitive advantage. I, we're not really sure because we, we're, we're in the thicket of things, right? But since you're doing this as a project and you can see it from the outside looking in, help us kind of understand what you guys are seeing. Um, and again, you know, focusing on this new virtual learning climate, um, do we have an opportunity that we're missing? Uh, yeah, the goal yeah. really is to scale to scale what we have here. We have the platform. You see, we have you know, the, the brains behind it. What we don't have is um, the funding to scale it in a way to professionalize it. 
we need that. Um, but we can't do that unless we have a hold of our market. And right now, I mean, I don't even know what our market share is because I don't know how many, <laughs> what yeah. the market share, what the market is, you know? So maybe learning how to um, understanding what our market share is, then we can um, kind of differentiate the markets between us and our competitors. And then we can create a new recruitment me mechanism to, you know, to target our specific markets. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and, and, and learning who they are, who's our target market? Who are you? You know, you are a student doing this. If you're a university student, we know why you're here. Your, your professors made you do it. Okay. But if you are a professional or if you are an underage student, why are you here? And how can we get more people like you yeah. and help us understand how we can you know, scale or sell what we have to offer so that we can continue to evolve as a global community. Yeah. So yeah, when it comes to marketing then, uh, so a bad advice from you would be uh, use social media. That, that's not useful. We know that we've used it. Um, so some of that works, some of that doesn't, but we know that. Uh, a practical advice or useful advice would be one with a lot of specifics <clears throat> and particularly related to maybe things like influencers. We haven't tried that. Uh, we're just not sure. We're not sure what influencers we can, you know, which specific people we can go to, uh, how much they charge, uh, if they can do a good job. So if you have any suggestions of that kind, do let us know. But with names, prices, uh, you know, all the details uh, so that we can use it. Um, we thought about maybe using some online communities, groups, chat rooms. Uh, so maybe there are some sort of, you know, groups on Facebook of maybe parents who seek additional experience for their kids, or maybe young professionals who are, you know, trying to get, gain new experience. So if we knew about those groups, maybe we can join them and either post paid advertisement or maybe participate in some other form. Uh, so that would be interesting. Mailing lists. Maybe there are some mailing lists for teachers or you know homeschooled uh, parents who homeschool their children, something like that. Again, we don't know about their existence. If we knew, maybe we could try to um, post some messages and see if it's going to work. So we would like your advice on that. Um, maybe specialized magazines, newsletters, blogs, podcasts. Again, for either motivated parents or motivated youths or maybe professionals. Or maybe for teachers, again, uh, we would like to maybe try those. We just don't know which ones would be suitable. Mm -hmm. And then we tried, as I said, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, but maybe there are more platforms. Maybe we should try something else. And so I'm not sure if there would be something that, uh, you know, might work better. So um, likewise, the message that we use, maybe, you know, as I said, it, it works pretty well for us. I mean, we have a lot of participants, but again, we have a billion, you know, potential users or participants, and we haven't reached even 0.0000001% yet. So maybe the message kit could be better or the ads could be better. And so that's where we really would like to see your creative ideas, what it might look like, you know, maybe the ad for, for Instagram or maybe a script for a video that we should produce or something else. Well, well the other <laughs> thing too, Dr. Voss, um, um, maybe we should not be marketing in a global format. Yeah. So um, marketing works in multi-levels, right? So you've got the national, of course, yeah. but then you've got, you know, regional and then you've got global. Uh, I skipped over multinational and transnational because that's a whole other lesson in itself. But let's think about maybe we need to, um, segment our markets by regions in the same way that you would maybe um, advertise to European students, you know, from the 28, 27 countries, you would not market X culture Academy in the same way yep. in Latin America or in Africa or in, you know, Asia. And, and then even in those kinds of Europe, for example, is divided into upper European countries, the Northern European countries, the former Eastern European countries, and then of course, what we call the West, right? So they even they have different um, methods of being captivated by your marketing campaign. So help us understand, maybe regionally, yeah, we maybe. need to be a little bit more specific in the way that we target our audience. Yeah. Very true. And, and especially when if we wanted to talk to schools, school districts and companies, again, I imagine that 
uh, especially schools and school districts are set up differently in different countries. And so mm -hmm. maybe it should be a very different approach depending on the country. Again, we would like to hear from you, are there any regional or you know, national uh, specifics that we need to take into account? So, but yes, anything and everything related to promotion, we are very interested. As I said, you know, we have a great product. We get extremely good feedback. The challenge is that it's very difficult to inform people about this problem. And, and perhaps the biggest problem is that, yes, we can place ads, but um, you know that probably, and if you don't, I'm telling you that statistics show that people spend uh, something like 1.5 seconds looking at the ad on, 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 on the screen, whatever screen that is, before they move on. So like when you see an ad on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, you probably can't wait you know, to click next and then skip the ad. And so that's not a problem. In fact, I myself don't like ads. I don't look at them and I try to skip them. But the problem is that um, if you sell something standard, like if you are trying to advertise a book or if you are trying to advertise an online course or if you're trying to advertise a, um, I don't know, private school, usually you can sort of catch person's attention in a second with one word, like, you know, private school or new book. And people know immediately what that is, right? And so if they're interested, they will read it, they will watch it, and they will potentially buy it. But if they're not interested, they just move on. That's not a problem. So that's easy. So they, they get what's being advertised in the first second. Like sculpture is a little trickier. So it's a very unique progr program. And so there is no name for what we do. Like we cannot describe it with one name. It's not an online course. It's not a book. It's not a school per se. It's a program where we will take people from all around the world, put them in international teams. They will work on real life challenges. They will learn through experience. Like you need at least 10 seconds, maybe even more, just to, to just give at least some indication of what it is. And mm -hmm. so the challenge here is that with something so unique without a name, uh, you know, if, if people look at the ad on average 1.5 seconds, it means that 99.9% .9 kind of scroll through without even knowing what's been offered to them. So it's not that they didn't like it or they don't need it. It's they never even understood what it was. And so maybe you can help us figure out a way to sort of explain what it is, like maybe with a catchy slogan or maybe with some, I don't know, picture or something so that people understand right away, oh, okay, that's what it is. And then, okay, well, I don't need it. Well, and if that's the case, that's fine. Or they say, oh, that's interesting, I wanna watch. And so we haven't quite figured out how to introduce or explain what we are offering without, you know, like so quickly that, you know, before the person can scroll up. So that's, that's one of the challenges. And then there are a bunch of other things we ask for help with. You can read in the um, uh, challenge instructions, like we are asking for your help with the pricing model. Maybe what we have is not best. We are asking for your ideas with funding like grants and maybe some sp sponsorships or some, um, um, you know, like development grants from the government. Again, we haven't explored that, but it seems like there are a lot of foundations that support something like what we do. And we have empirical evidence that what we do works cultural intelligence improves, uh, stereotyping goes down, people feel more confident and more interested in working with people from other cultures, people have friends. So like we do provide a lot of, you know, tangible, measurable results. And so, but we haven't really explored uh, if there are any, you know, resources available for programs like this. So, uh, but yes, th those are the, the kinds of, you know, uh, challenges we face and uh, the kinds of help we need. So, so far, as I said, it's been going pretty well. But at the same time, uh, you know, I think we can deliver this wonderful program to more people. Uh, it would be better if we had some uh, more significant resources, like what we do here with Dr. B, that's essentially our own time, just because yeah. we love it. And so all the many coaches and, and uh, professors who help us. And so it works well this way. I mean, yes, we, we love what we do and we enjoy it. But again, if we were able to find some sources of funding and hire proper staff, you know, proper uh, personnel, who would manage it as a job for them. You would have better experience. We would be able to do more. So again, that's something that we are, you know, long-term plans that we are interested in. So, so far it's been running on basically love and enthusiasm. It's, we're doing a good job. And actually, it's quite which a is, good job. Which is infinite, but. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, again, it would be possible to do much more for this world if we had yeah. more resources. And so those are the kinds of ideas and questions we have for you. And if you can help us, we would be very interested to hear your suggestions. 
And so uh, we will be done with this project in May, and that's when we start the next recruitment campaign. But also that's when the opportunity presents itself to redesign the program. So if you have any suggestions for how the program could be improved, for how uh, the design of the program, but also the recruitment for the program could be improved, we can literally put your ideas to the test uh, right here and use it during the yeah. summer, make the changes, and then see if it works better in the fall. Yeah. And when we say we will test your ideas, we literally test your ideas, yeah. unless it's an idea that we've already tested. Yeah. I mean, we're yeah. very open to kind of, um, you know, reinventing, reinventing all the time, because that's the kind of community we are. Um, and if you're interested in continuing on with us and, and helping us uh, follow through with your ideas, you know, join our team of coaches because we have yeah, a yeah. really great team of coaches who help us execute a lot of the ideas that you guys come up with. Yeah. Um, Arseni, so uh, Dr. B, do we have anything else on the business? Um, uh, I think that's it for I me. I think, yeah, you have a very detailed also list of questions in the uh, brief for the program. So um, we do need your help. And, uh, and if you do a great job, again, maybe you can even join our team as one of our partners, employees. We're very interested in collaboration. Um, Arseni, I'm not sure if you're still here. If you are, so you said you're in Ukraine. What's the situation there? Can you share with us? Uh, just a quick one minute update. So Arseni, I muted his microphone, but for some reason the sound is not coming in. I can hear him, Vas. Yes, you, you can? Uh, okay. Oh, here yes. you are. Okay. okay. So just tell us a couple of words about yourself, where you are, and what's the latest on Ukraine, uh, where you are. Yes, only one more thing uh, I will say about situation in Ukraine uh, is that it is a real war. Uh, there are many victims. A lot of Ukrainian cities are fully destroyed. Universities, schools, hospitals, and even kindergartens uh, are on the fire. Uh, however, uh, Ukrainians, Ukrainians will not give up, and I hope everything will be uh, will be uh, uh, fine uh, um, and all right shortly. Thank you for your support. You stay safe. So it, it seems like you're in the same city where my parents are. So uh, I know that there were some bombings and I know that the sirens go off all the time, but it's not as bad as some other places. Uh, I hear that some cities have been completely destroyed. Is, is that correct? Uh, yes, some, some cities are completely destroyed. It's, uh, yeah, Dr. B and everyone else here. So I did some math yesterday, so to speak. And so, you know, everybody thinks about it just as, as a conflict, but no, the rate of destruction is the same as the Second World War. So with the thousands of people per day who are dying now, if it did go on for seven years as the Second World War did, we would see the same millions of people dead, like it's exactly the same rate. So this is very serious. Not to mention that, uh, you know, it's uh, essentially the largest country in the world by territory. Uh, attacking the largest European country by territory. Again, that's not just some small, you know, uh, uh, little conflict somewhere. It's it's already huge. Uh, but as I said, you know, if it stays this same way uh, with a few thousand people dying every day, uh, I mean, very soon we will be in millions. And so uh, hopefully it will not go on for much longer. But uh, like for myself, I didn't even realize, but it does look very much like the Second World War. In the Second World War, it was also first unclear sort of who the Aggressor is, as you remember, like when uh, the Soviet Union invaded uh, Romania, I'm uh, sorry, um, uh, Finland in 38, uh, 38, 39 it was. So they uh, sort of presented that as, uh, you know, fin Finnish new government asked for help. Then they invaded uh, Romania, uh, the Baltic states. Again, everybody was like, what's going on there? You know, we are not sure. Maybe there is nothing wrong. Then Germany invaded Sudetenland uh, in uh, annexed Aux Austria. Again, everyone was like, oh, maybe those are Germans, maybe they can do it, so we don't know. Mm -hmm. So the United States didn't join the war for two years until the end of 19, uh, what is it, 40, 40 41, uh, until the, um, uh, 41, until the Pearl Harbor was bombed, uh, what is it, like in December of 41. So again, the United States wasn't even sure if it's something serious and warrants an involvement. And then when it you know, started like for real, uh, it was roughly the same number of casualties per day than what we see in Ukraine now. So it's not just a little conflict that we can just watch on TV. It is, it is a real full-scale uh, serious bloodbath um, comparable to the Second World War 
both in terms of the scenarios, but also in terms of the casualties and destruction. I hope it will not have to go on for so long as the Second World War, but, um, but yeah, it, it does look very serious. So um, anyway, um, stay safe there, Arseni. So uh, say hello to my hometown and um, everyone else. We are looking for your advice, forward to your advice and insights for this challenge. And hopefully with your help, we will be able to deliver this program better and to more participants who, who need this kinds of experience. Arseni, prayers to you and your family. Okay, be safe, please. Yes, thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's all true, yes. Yeah. 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 All right, well, so we're trying to help as much as we can. Uh, so send in some help, uh, containers of help, uh, talking to politicians, um, you know. Uh, so we'll see, hopefully everything will yeah. be fine. Yeah. Soon. And honestly, you guys, ex-culture, helping young people who will become the decision makers of the future, learn cultural intelligence and learn to understand each other so that we can make a more peaceful place. Yeah. This is what we do. Please yeah, so help us, help so us some, figure out how to do this more. Exactly, this is precisely so that something like this doesn't happen again. Every time I think that that was the last war from now on, people will be smarter. And then one day bombs just start falling. So we are back yeah. to where we were. Yeah. Okay. Nice weekend to everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Zachary, B, for joining us here. Um, so, and um, looking forward to your ide ideas and suggestions. And Arseni, stay safe there. So hopefully we'll see you soon and we'll have a, I don't know, I'm not sure if you're old enough to have a, oh, a cup of tea together. We'll have a cup of tea <laughs> together in a peaceful city of Rivne or whatever yeah. other cities. Peace and love, everybody. Peace and bye -bye. love. Bye-bye.